What's going on everybody? It's the Home Theater Hobbies here and this week we have our full review of the Amazon Fire TV Cube. So let's get to it. First of all, if you enjoy product reviews, unboxings, talk about streaming media, and basically all things home theater, click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be alerted anytime we upload new content. So here it is, the Amazon Fire TV Cube. Now I know I'm a little bit late with this review, but that's because the first unit I had was defective. I plugged it in to do the initial setup, the startup chime played, but I had no picture. I ended up changing out the HDMI cable and that seemed to work, so I continued on with the setup. But a few days later when I asked for the Amazon Assistant, who I'm going to call A-Lady in this review because I don't want to set off everyone's assistant, I asked for the A-Lady and I had no response. Uh, and that happened after I turned the TV volume down and all sorts of things like that. So at that point I realized I have a defective unit so let me return it. I returned it, got this unit, and my full review is based off of this new unit which seems to be working just fine. The Fire TV Cube is a streaming media device from Amazon. It's similar to Roku, Apple TV, Nvidia Shield, and many other streaming devices. You can download apps such as Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Apple TV+, CBS All Access, and many, many others and watch the content through this device. The Fire TV Cube features a 6-core processor with 2GB of RAM and 16GB of internal storage. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support. It supports all HD resolutions and 4K. All major versions of HDR are supported including HDR10, HDR10+, HLG, and Dolby Vision. It supports Dolby Atmos, 7.1 surround, 2-channel stereo, and HDMI audio pass-through up to 5.1. It features the Amazon Assistant, who we'll call the A-Lady in this review, and you can interact with her without turning on your TV because there is a speaker built into the cube. It stands 3 inches tall, 3.4 inches wide, and 3.4 inches deep, and it weighs 1.03 pounds. Now let's talk setup. Setting this device up is actually pretty easy. They give you everything you need with the exception of an HDMI cable. You'll have to provide that on your own. And if you want to connect this to a 4K television, make sure you have a 4K ready HDMI cable. But once you have all of the connections, all you have to do is plug in the HDMI cable and a power cable and run through the setup process. You'll have to connect to your Wi-Fi, download some updates, install those, and then connect to your Amazon account or create one if you don't have one. Once that is complete, everything is good to go and you can start downloading your favorite apps and television shows and movies if you want those. One quick note about the setup. When you're setting this up, Amazon recommends that you place this one to two feet away from any speaker. That way, when you're asking for the A-Lady Assistant, you can call her and she's not confused about what's going on on your television. Now let's talk about the hardware itself and we'll start with the remote. Overall, this is Amazon's second generation Fire TV remote and it feels pretty good in the hand. On the back, it has this little indention for your finger to rest so you can just kind of push the buttons as you need to. On the top, you have a power button here in the top left corner and that controls all your devices because through the Fire TV, you can manage all your devices including your receiver, sound bar, television, and of course the Fire TV Cube itself. To the right of that, you have this microphone hole and just below that you have the microphone button. So you can press that button and you can call for the Amazon Assistant. Just below that, you have this directional pad that allows you to do up, down, left, right. And in the center, you have an OK button so you can move around in the Fire TV interface. Just below that, you have the home, back button, and a menu button so you can get more information. Also, you have play, pause, seek forward and back. And just below that, you have the volume button so you can change the volume and of course, mute your television. Now let's talk about the Fire TV Cube itself. It actually feels pretty good in the hand and I'm wearing gloves because this entire surface all the way around is piano black and it picks up fingerprints and dust like none other. But uh, at the bottom on the front, you have the Amazon logo and just above that, you have this what they call light bar and that indicates the status of the Fire TV Cube. When you ask for the A-Lady, it turns blue to let you know she's listening or if you mute it, it turns red so you know she's muted and it also turns yellow sometimes depending on what it's doing, if it's thinking or something like that. Up top, you have these eight little holes here and that is for the far field mics so the A-Lady can hear you from all across your room. It actually works very, very well. You don't have to talk very loud and she can still hear you. Also on the top of the cube, you have four different buttons. The button on the left is a microphone mute button so you press it, kills the microphones on the Fire TV cube. You have a plus and a minus button in the center 
those change the volume of the Fire TV Cube's internal speaker. And here on the far right, you have this multi-function button, which allows you to wake up Alexa if you need to. On the bottom of the cube, there are four standoffs, one in each corner that allow the cube to sit just a little bit off of a table. And in the center, you have the internal speaker. This allows you to ask the Amazon Assistant questions without having to turn your television on to hear her response. And this is one of the main things that sets this apart from the Fire TV Stick 4K. Now let's move on and talk about the user interface of the Fire TV Cube. If you're familiar with the Amazon Fire TV user interface, then the Cube is no different. You start off with a home menu that has your most recent apps and TV shows at the beginning. You can scroll to the right or to the left. And just below that, you have your apps and channels. They also have ads here, which I don't really care for. And I think the interface itself is a little bit junky, but at the same time, you can kind of scroll through and get everything that you want. You can hit the home button on the menu and it automatically takes you up to the top menu. If you go to the left, you get the search functionality so you can search via the remote or you can of course use the Amazon Assistant to search as well. Next you have live so you can find all the live TV shows that you may be watching. Maybe you have an antenna connected or the Fire TV recast connected and you can see that. Next you have your videos and it starts off with things that you have tagged in your watch list. Also your video library, maybe you've actually added some videos to your library and they are there. Next you have the DVR functionality. And this is if you have the Fire TV recast DVR. That's what I have and so I have this particular menu. Now if you don't have this and you have the Fire TV recast, you need to make sure your recast and your Fire TV cube are on the same Wi-Fi network. Then you go into the settings, you add it under equipment control, and from there it should pop up after a few minutes once everything syncs up. The next menu you have is movies, and these are the different movies that you can either purchase, buy, or even some of the Amazon Prime free stuff. The same with TV shows. And the final big menu item you have here is apps, and you can go through the featured apps, or you can select different games, or different categories of apps. And finally, you have settings. You can go in here and you can add different pieces of equipment, live TV, and of course, change all the various settings for your Fire TV. Alexa? Play Jack Ryan in 4K. Getting Jack Ryan from Prime Video. I'm sorry, but I just can't let this go. Mike. Now that we've done all that, let's move on. Let's rank the Fire TV Cube in a few different categories from one to five. One being the absolute worst and five being the absolute best. The first category I'm gonna rank is design, and I have to give this a four and a half out of five. I really like the overall shape. It's a cube, so it's a little bit different than your standard streaming media device that's rectangular like the one I have here. But one thing about it is it's not so different. It's not like the TiVo Bolt from a couple of years ago that was all oddly shaped and weird, but this one will actually fit in an entertainment system. Now, the major drawback, in my opinion, is the fact that it is piano black. It looks good, but it picks up a lot of dust and fingerprints, and so you'll have to keep a cleaning cloth available just to kind of keep it clean, but otherwise, I think it's a pretty good design. Next category I'm gonna rank is performance, and I have to give this a five out of five. I didn't have any issues with this whatsoever. It found my Wi-Fi network and picked it up very easily and worked very, very well. The interface is snappy, and things start almost immediately when you press play. Obviously that depends on your connection, but as far as the box is concerned, everything works very, very well, and it's very easy to download things and just do everything you need to do. So I have to give this a five out of five for performance. The next category I'm gonna rank is features, and I have to give this a four and a half out of five. It has all the features that you want, including all the major apps, YouTube TV, YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, Apple TV Plus, and many, many others. It also has Dolby Atmos, HDR support for HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, Dolby Vision, and HLG. I mean, it does a really good job. The only place where it has a little bit of drawback is the fact that it only does 5.1 audio pass through. So if you connect this to your receiver, you're only going to get 5.1 surround sound when you're watching things that might be Dolby Atmos like Jack Ryan. But I did find a way to get around this. I connected the Fire TV Cube to my television through a normal HDMI port and then I used enhanced audio return channel for my television to the receiver and that actually did send an Atmos signal through to my receiver and I was able to play Atmos content. But that is a workaround and I understand that not everybody has EARC, so I have to give this a four and a half out of five for features. 
The final category I'm gonna rank is value, and I have to give the Fire TV Cube a five out of five. It is very competitively priced with its major competitors. It actually outdoes the Roku Ultra in that it's a little bit more expensive, but it includes all the major HDR formats and it has a built-in assistant. Whereas it's cheaper than the Nvidia Shield and the Apple TV 4K, so you're getting a lot of bang for your buck out of this box. But if you want something that's a little bit cheaper or if you don't care about the Amazon Assistant, pick up the Fire TV Stick 4K because it is cheaper and it has all the same features without the Amazon Assistant built in. Overall, I highly recommend the Fire TV Cube. It has all the major apps including ESPN, YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, Apple TV+, Disney+, and many, many others. You can purchase movies and TV shows. You can also rent them from this little box. You can ask the Assistant what the weather is or control different things in your home. It has support for all of the major formats that we need to watch modern television, including all the HDR formats and Dolby Atmos. And the design is actually pretty good. It does pick up a few fingerprints, but otherwise it works really, really well. Now, if the Fire TV Cube is not for you, if it's a little bit too expensive or you don't want Amazon Alexa built into the box, then you can purchase the Fire TV Stick 4K because it supports all the same thing, but it just does not have Alexa built in quite the same way. But otherwise, this is a great device and I highly recommend it. If you wanna purchase this or anything else from Amazon, use those links in the description below. They help support the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment. We'll talk to you next time.